All right, folks, so if you've been following along with my content over the past couple of months, looking at any of the stuff where I've recreated some of the things that I made on Season 8 of Alone, you will have seen my Leatherman P4 quite a bit. I've gotten a lot of interest in it, a lot of questions about it, and so in this video, we're gonna go through and review this thing. I'm gonna go through all of the tools. We're gonna take a look at the P4 versus one of the other models, in this case, the, uh, the rebar. And then also, I'm gonna show and talk about some of the stuff that I made on the show, basically using just my, uh, my P4. So let's get started. So we're gonna jump right into a comparison between the, uh, the P4 here and the, uh, the, the rebar, which is one of the more standard models of Leatherman. Now, right off the bat, there's a couple of big differences between the P4 and the rebar. Uh, and one of the biggest features that I like is the P4, I can use this thing with one hand. So if I'm holding on to something, a piece of wood or, or whatever I'm working on, you know, I'm holding something, I can take this thing out of my pocket and I can open it up and use it with one hand. It is very easy to do, uh, you know, just like that. With the rebar and a lot of the other models, they're quality tools, they're well built, but you can't do that. You know, you, I, let's see if I can, I mean, I can open this thing with one hand, it's just, it's kind of a pain in the butt, you know. The other big difference between the rebar and the P4 also comes down to one-handed operation. When I pull this thing out of my pocket, with the, with the P4, all of the tools are on the outside and readily accessible. And so when I pull this thing out of my pocket, I can open the knife just like that with just my thumb. Very, very easy. It's got these little tabs here that are your, your locks for your tools. And so when I lock the blade open right there, all I've got to do is put my thumb on this, pull that, and the blade closes uh, very, very easily. I can do that same thing with the scissors, uh, any, you know, the saw, any of that stuff, the, the serrated blade, all of it's accessible. Even the internal tools, the, uh, the screwdrivers in here, I can access that with just my, uh, just my thumb very very handy feature now with the rebar you have to actually open the tool up get out whatever tool you're going to be using and then close it back still very handy but not nearly uh, on the usefulness scale of the uh, the p4 one of the other differences and this doesn't seem like it's very major but the p4 has a, a clip on it right here I like that because I always clip it just right on my pocket right there and it's very, it's readily available. It's right there on my pocket. All I gotta do is stick my thumb in there, pull it out, and it's ready to go. You know, with, if it's down in my pocket, I gotta go searching around down in there and it's not nearly as quick or efficient and sometimes you need to be able to get to your tool quickly and open it quickly and that, that's back to that one-handed operation. You know, I'm, I'm working on something and there you go. I've got my pliers. It's very easy to, uh, to operate these things. So another difference here is when I'm using the pliers right here and I'm really clamping down on something. First of all, these, this is just a, it's a heavy duty tool. Like I feel like I can really grab hold of something and, and squeeze on this thing and I'm not going to mess it up. But another feature that seems like it's small or inconsequential but actually is is pretty nice is that the edges on this p4 are rolled in so you have more surface area on your hand so if you really have to put some pressure on something it doesn't hurt your hand with this rebar it's the the edges of the uh, the opening here are fairly thin so if you really have to wrench on something it puts a lot of pressure where those where your hands come in contact with that and it can, you know, it's not very comfortable to use. So the, the thing that keeps these two things from coming apart is on the rebar, it's friction. Everything is tight in here, it's a friction fit. And on the P4, there's actually a couple of magnets in here, which is why it can be so loose and free swinging and easy to use is uh, when, when it's closed, there's, a, there's two magnets in here that come in contact and actually hold the thing closed. So when you break that magnetic bond, it's, uh, it's very, uh, very loose and very free. It's loose 
but it doesn't feel loose when you're using it. It's a very solid tool in your hand. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go through the tools on this thing. And the first thing that I'm gonna cover is the primary blade. This is the straight edged blade right here. I used this so much. I used it every single day on the show and I use it every single day, just, just every day in everyday living. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty robust blade. And if you've watched any of the things that I've made on here, I've done a lot of carving with this. I've actually put this on a piece of wood. I've batoned it. I've stuck it in a piece of wood and twisted it to pop wood off. And it is still, I've not bent it. I've not broken it. It is a very nice, very thick, robust blade. Now I just wanna compare that to the, uh, the rebar here. Let's see here if I can get this out. So the primary blade on the rebar is about the same size. It's a little bit, uh, the, the depth isn't quite as bit, but the big difference here is the thickness of the blade. The, uh, the blade on the P4 is, it looks like it's twice as thick as the one on the rebar. And I don't think for this rebar, it, I don't think it could have held up for a lot of the things that I was using my, uh, my multi-tool for out there. Okay, so I'm gonna put the rebar away uh, for now and just focus on uh, the P4. So we've gone over the knife. Like I said, I've used this for all of my carving projects. I butchered my entire deer with just this little blade right here. I skinned, quartered, uh, cut the entire thing into strips with just this little blade right here. And, uh, and it, it did very, very well. Now the, the way that I kept this sharp was just on a flat rock. And if you think about it, I've actually got quite a few questions about that, how I kept my tools sharp out there. If you think about it, a honing stone is, that's all it is, it's, it's a flat rock or a rock, a stone that's been milled flat or sawn flat. And so I just found a flat rock on the lake shore and just used that to keep my tools sharp. And I can actually put a razor sharp shaving edge on this knife with just that flat stone. So moving on, I, uh, next we have a flathead screwdriver, which is, you know, most screwdrivers on multi-tools just, I mean, let's be honest, they just suck. They're not heavy duty enough. Uh, but this, I have used this for turning screws. I've used it for sticking in, like if I saw a slot in a piece of wood, stick it in there and pry that little section out, something like that. This is a, it's a thick, heavy duty, um, screwdriver and like I said I've there wasn't a lot of screws to turn out there on the lake but I used it for prying uh, things quite a bit very well made heavy heavy duty tool uh, Phillips head screwdriver and a bottle opener uh, again didn't have any use for this as far as the tools uh, intended purpose but I did use the, uh, the the screwdriver here to ream things out quite a bit and open up holes so the last tool on this side is the scissors. Now the scissors are something that you might not think have a lot of use, but I actually ended up using them quite a bit out there. Uh, they, they come in very useful for trimming fishing line. Uh, I used them for trimming my fingernails. They come in very handy for that. I used them to trim my mustache so that I wasn't chewing on my mustache when I was eating. But uh, they have a little spring here so you can use them with, uh, with just your thumb here. Um, but actually pretty, pretty doggone handy. They're not something that I thought I would use a lot, but definitely uh, used them enough to justify having them on here. So I'll flip this thing over to the other side. And the first tool that I opened up is the serrated blade, kind of the utility blade on this. Now this is the blade that I use for pretty much anything that's gonna be hard on a blade where I don't wanna use my primary blade and dull it. But I use this for hard use stuff because I know I'm gonna dull it. And for me, there's no way, uh, there's not an efficient way to sharpen this out in the field. And so if it gets dull, like this is the blade that I expect to get dull. So if I need to cut you know, stuff that's gonna dull my blade, this is the blade I'm gonna do it with. So moving on, uh, we've got a little file. You've got a single cut on one side, a double cut on the other. 
I ended up using this a little bit for some filing on some of the small little projects that I worked with, but other than that, uh, not a super useful tool. The next tool that's on here is, you know, honestly, I have no idea what this is for. I have no clue. It's got, maybe somebody out there can tell me, it's got this little tang tab thing on there and there's like a little arrow pointing at it. I don't know what this thing is. It's got a ruler on it. Um, you know, if, if I were to modify this tool, one, uh, one cool thing might be to take these two things, the file and this little ruler thing, they're side by side. You could take those both out and fabricate a thicker, much more robust tool to go in here and take that place, perhaps a drill bit or something like that. I didn't have time to do that before the show, so I just left them on there. The next tool that we have on here is an awl. And I actually did use this uh, a little bit out there. I used it for, if you, if you notice when I made the gill net out there, I had floats on it. And to get those floats on my top line, I had to bore a hole all the way through. And I actually used the awl to, uh, to bore some of that out. Uh, so I used that quite a bit. Uh, in that regard. And then uh, we move on to the, uh, the can opener here. Now, of course, I didn't have any cans to open out there, but I did use the can opener quite a bit. Uh, I actually sharpened the, uh, the, the edge of this can opener before I went out there. And the reason I did that was twofold. One was for making the, uh, the friction fire set, both the handhold and the hole in the, uh, the hearth board. And then the other thing that I used this for quite a bit out there was actually for a wood gouge. Uh, I used this for making spoons and ladles and anything where I needed to, to dish out uh, a piece of wood. I used this a, a lot on the cup that I made out there. The cup was actually a burn bowl, but I used this for scraping out the charcoal uh, and removing excess wood. And the last tool on this side is the saw. Now this is something that I didn't think that I would use nearly as much as I ended up using it. But the saw actually was one of the, one of the most useful things on this Leatherman. So I ended up using the saw almost every day. I used it certainly for all of the carving projects that I did out there. And it's still, even after all of that use, it's still very sharp. Uh, it's a very, very well-made, very useful part of this multi-tool. So going back to opening this thing up, the pliers are very good. They're, they're, they're heavy duty. You feel like you can really put a lot of pressure on there. The wire cutters are top notch. I cut a lot of snare wire out there. I use snare wire for doing all of my shelter, for lashing all of the, uh, the logs onto my shelter. I, uh, of course, set snares using, this, uh, using these wire cutters and uh, used them nearly every day, especially as the season went on and I started, uh, started doing more snaring. I would use these pliers and the wire cutters just about every single day. So on the television show, they showed me uh, carving uh, a couple of these little bush planes. So I did all of the notching for the tail fins and everything. I, I basically made the whole thing with just the Leatherman. I did hew out some of the pieces with my ax, but all of the notching, all of the fine detail was done with the Leatherman on here. And I've actually got a video where I recreated this bush plane uh, and it shows the entire process. So another thing that you saw uh, on the show was this little knife or this little uh, sign that I made here. And I burned in Clan Hayes right there on the end. But it's got our names in there and it's all uh, basic. It's kind of like routed out. But again, I did all of this with just the, uh, the Leatherman here. And what I did, so this is alder. So it's a fairly soft wood. So all I did was I outlined all of these things with the blade and I just kept chipping out, chipping out, and then I would outline it again, and I would chip out um, where, I had, uh, where I had scribed around, and basically just went all the way through uh, the wood just like it is here. Uh, I used the saw a little bit on some of it, but it was primarily just the, uh, the straight blade right here 
that I use for this little sign that I made. But here is the coolest thing that the most intricate uh, thing that I did on the show and I'm, I wish that they had shown more of this, uh, but they didn't. They showed me, uh, it wasn't even completed. So on the last episode, they showed me bringing this out and, com and, and sitting on it where it didn't have the bottom in it yet. But guys, this is a full-on dovetail notched, uh, dovetail corner notched box that I made out there on the show. This is made out of willow, like a, like a big willow out there. So I cut a couple of rounds, I split boards out of it. I hewed the boards with my ax to approximately a half inch thick. I did all of the dovetail joints with just the, uh, the saw on my Leatherman and the blade. So I would take, I would saw out the, the, uh, the cuts and then I would take my blade and work, uh, cut those, those pieces out where the saw cuts came. I would cut those, uh, cut those little dovetail notches out of there, fit this whole box together. I hewed out some boards for the bottom and I actually inset, so there's a groove all the way around the bottom here. And these boards are, there's nothing holding them in there except for the sides of the box where it comes together. So they're all inlaid or inset in there. And like I said, all of that, all of this was done. Pretty sure it's the first cabinetry that's ever been done on the show, but it was all done with a Leatherman P4. It's got the dates that I was out there and it's got all of the, uh, all the critters that helped me to get through. One deer, five, six hare, uh, five, six, seven, eight grouse, and five, seven, eight fish. There you go, bam. Again, guys, I cannot say enough about this multi-tool. I've had all kinds of multi-tools over the years. This is by far the best multi-tool that I have ever had, bar none.